Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. I want to just welcome you right now. Those visiting here today, those are members here today, those watching us online, I want to welcome you to Spoken Word Church. I thank you that you've taken time to be before God today. I thank you, Lord, that we have ears to hear today what the Spirit is saying to us. We have a heart to receive your word, Father God. We thank you that the word that we hear today will produce the fruit that you desire in our lives, Father God. I just worship you right now, Father God, in spirit and in truth. Lord, I thank you right now, hallelujah, that you are a good God. Father God, I thank you that we are people that do not walk by sight, but we walk by faith. We choose this day to worship you. We choose this day to hear you, Lord. I just thank you right now, Father God, that you have a specific word that we can stand on, Lord, in this time. Father God, we choose to stand on your word and your word alone. Father God, we don't look to the right or to the left, but we stay focused on you. We keep our eyes on you because you are our help, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, for those that are not sure today, Lord. Father God, we just thank you that the word that they hear today, Father God, will convince them that you are the one and only true God. We thank you that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Lord, I just give you praise right now. Because this is the day that you have made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I thank you right now that the words that we hear today are words from you. We thank you for the mighty man of God, Pastor Darrell R. Simmons, Lord. We thank you that he hears from you, and the words that he speaks are directly from you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you right now that if there's anyone watching that is having struggles today, Lord, I thank you that they can run to the feet of Jesus. They can go to the cross and receive revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that we are yielded vessels to be used by you today, Lord. I give you all glory, honor, and praise because you are a mighty God. You will never leave us nor forsake us. You are a true and mighty God. Lord, I just thank you right now that your word allows us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in your word. Father God, I pray right now that all distractions will cease right now in the name of Jesus. So that we can hear your word. So that we can forever be changed by your word. So we can stand on your word. Lord, you are a good God. Father God, I just give you praise because you've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And we're calling for more, Lord, to be called out of darkness into your light. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. God, you're a good God. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us, Lord, so that we can come back to you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your son. We give you praise for your son. God, we just thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, 
but have everlasting life. We thank you right now, Lord, that we have the ears to hear. We have the ears to hear your word today, Lord. And it will be planted on good soil. And we know the agenda of the devil, which is to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come that we have life and in more abundantly. So we thank you today, Lord, for that life. That life that you've given to us, that abundant life. The Zoe life. Lord, I just thank you right now. That we're not easily moved off your word. But we stand firm, rooted, and grounded on your word. I give you praise today, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want you to welcome the man of this house, Pastor Darrell R. Simmons. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Bless your sister Jackie. Glory to God. We thank you for your prayers. He's, James said that the fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Amen. To God be the glory. All you kingdom people this morning. Do you know your last name is Overcomer? Your last name is Overcomer. Say, I am an overcomer. I overcome difficulties, disappointments, because Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Give my hand praise this morning. Glory to God. God bless you. And once again, welcome to the family of spoken word. You may be seated in the presence of a life changing king this morning. Amen. To God be the glory for all that he is doing and has done. Amen. There's a cry for the saints to get back in order. There's a cry for the saints to get back in position. Amen. Glory to God. There are many people in the world that are out of position and they're not in their rightful place that the glory of God will reign not just upon them, but up on the face of the earth. How many know that God wants to reign upon the face of the earth? How many know that God wants to reign upon the face of the earth? God wants to reign upon the face of the earth. Amen. Because he said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein belongs unto the Lord. Glory to God. God bless you once again this morning. It's an honor to be before you and it's an honor to be in the presence of God. Amen. Once again, I pray through the life of Jesus Christ and through the life of this ministry for those who've been following the ministry and been a part of the ministry that you are growing, not just growing and just head knowledge, but you're growing in the spiritual things of God, that God is really showing you how to walk out the Bible, how to walk out the scriptures, that you can see a life changing, rearranging focus in your life by way of the scriptures and that you come to believe what God has said in the scriptures. And therefore, you can walk yourself through the scriptures and you can point and say, yes, that's me. That is I. That is me, Lord. Thank you for showing me the way, showing me that you are the truth and showing me that you are the life. Amen. Glory to God. I want to bless each and every man and woman of God that stands for God's glory and God's righteousness this morning. Wherever you may be around the world, I salute you in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And know that God is pleased when you stand for him because divided we can fall, but united we can stand for the glory of Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. It doesn't make if you're large or small, wide or thin. If you're standing for Jesus Christ, you're all the way in. Amen. Glory to God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I'm so delighted and thankful once again that God has graced us and that he will give us peace. Amen. In everything that we do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we've been in a teaching series and I'm going to trust God that this is what God wants us to continue. We've been in a teaching series and the series title is that we live by faith. And when we live by faith, it's just not to say those words out of our mouth. It's what we do and how we live. And we've been talking about overcoming 
disappointments and difficulties in life. Overcoming disappointments and difficulties in life. This will be part four of our teaching. Part four of our teaching. I pray through the inception of this teaching that you have gained a little bit of more knowledge and understanding about God and how he maneuvers us through difficulties and how things in life will try to move you away from trusting in the Lord. Because we know, as we read in 2 Corinthians, that Satan wants us to be ignorant. He wants us to be dumb about what he's trying to do to us. And God said to us in his word that we may not be ignorant of his devices. Paul reminded us in that same text that we should be sure. We should be sure. He remind us to be sure about it. And Paul said, therefore, I write to you again. Paul was repeating things to make sure that we are all the way in. In every situation in life, we have to make sure that we're all the way in in life because there will be difficulties. There will be disappointments in our life that will try to pull us away from following Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And so, therefore, it is from my perspective not to present myself, not to promote myself, but to present Jesus Christ as the son of the living God, not to promote myself, but exalt the son of Jesus. Amen. In everything that we do and everything that we say and to glorify him, that you will come closer to him and that he will draw closer to you and that you will see the glory of God uh, exuberate through you that people may not know him, but they know him through you. Amen. Glory to God. That's a good place to be. That God, that people can see Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, through you. Amen. It's the exception of him in your life that will present to them that Christ is Lord. And they want to know how can I become a part of that? What must I do to be in that and to live a life like you live? They're serving Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. And it's always been my and First Lady April's onset is to lead you to Jesus and never lead you to ourselves to show you that together we can stand that there's nothing too hard for God and as we united together in faith and in the ability to activate our faith and to move according to scripture and don't be naive about things that happen in the world but be all opt optimistic about the life that we serve in Christ amen how many know that all things are possible to them that believe all things are possible to them that believe. I mean, not just believing in anything, but I'm believing, I'm talking about believing in someone, and that someone is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That someone is the definite article that has preeminence in your life and preeminence all the way through Scripture. From Genesis to Revelation, Jesus has preeminence, but Jesus never considered himself to be equal with his Father. He knew his place in life. And therefore, he carried out what the father gave him as a mission in life. I mean, no, each and every one of us have a mission that has been given from the father way through the son that we must carry that mission out. And when we don't follow what God says, there can be difficulties, there can be disappointments when we're not following Christ and we begin to follow ourselves. You remember the old adage where grandmama used to tell the child, girl, you're smelling yourself, son, you're smelling yourself, amen. That means you're getting out of order. Hallelujah. For those that might don't know that, that don't know down home and city talk and you might be one that lives in the suburbs all of your life. I'm going to let you know that means you're out of order when you're smelling yourself. That means that you're out of order. You're not in the order of God. Amen. You're not in the order of Christ and you're not being obedient. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So with that being said, we just want to give God glory this morning, Father. Lord, we just want to lift you up. We want to hear a word from you. And Father, as we've been walking through the scriptures, we understand that disappointments and difficulties will rise on each and every one of us, that no one is excluded. And Father, I am included in that even the more. So Father, I ask that you would grace us with your love and grace us with your presence and grace us with sound doctrine on this morning that we may open up the word of God where it is written that we will see that it's not about us, but it's all about you and that we will pull God from the abstract and that it would hit the concrete 
meaning God, that we will have a better understanding and that we will build on the foundation that which is laid and that foundation is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And Lord, that we exalt your son, that he may be glorified in everything that we do and say. And Father, I pray for those that are at home that are not coming back to the house of God. Lord, that you will speak to them to let them know that they're needed in the house. that They are trophy people to show an example unto the world in the name of Jesus. Father, you're calling us in a new disposition. And from that new disposition, there are new things that we must do and a new way that we must operate. But God, we will not operate without you because you are all that we have and all that we need. We give you praise this morning, honor and glory. All that believe say Jesus is Lord. Amen. We thank him for his presence and we thank him for his comforting words. So this morning we're going to continue in part five of our teaching, living by faith, overcoming disappointments and difficulties in life. For the opening of this, I want to let you know that we all will face difficulties and difficulties has hit each and every one of our homes at some point in time in life. Maybe difficulties and disappointments are at your no knocking at your front door right now. But I'm here to let you know that it will be OK. It will be all right. As we study the word of God and that we dive into scriptures this morning, we will even see where people was disappointed at Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, he had no sin. He had a sinless life. He lived a perfect life. A life without sin. But many people was disappointed at him as well. So if they're going to be disappointed at Jesus, then guess what? They're going to be disappointed at you. There may be things you say and things I say that brings on disappointment in their life. Jesus was one that walked the walk and he talked the talk. His yea was yea and his nay was nay. He was never confused on what he said. Amen. Glory to God. And therefore, you and I should not be confused on what we say. So in this, we will see that everyone will face difficulties. And there are times in your life where you may feel that I can't move on. I can't go on. I, I can't trust God. There's no way that he's going to bring me out of this. There's no way that I can forgive myself. There's no way that I can uh, uh, exalt, exalt the glory of God. But somebody knows and that somebody is Jesus Christ. He know what he needs to say and know how he needs to meet your needs. He know when you're unhappy. He know when you're sad. He knows when you're mad. He knows these things. And therefore, we turn to him and not turn unto ourselves in life when life struggles come about our way. Amen. How I many know like in a four way traffic traffic light, you got the north, the south, the east and the west. You got the north that may have distractions. You got the east that may have difficulties. And you may have the, 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 the west that may have faults and trials and tribulations. But in the south end, or I can say in the last portion of that traffic light, there is a way that you're going to go through. Amen. There's a way that you're going to grow through. And when you go through that traffic light at the four-way stop sign, guess what? You don't hit no collisions. Because he has made the way straight for you. He has made the way open for you. So that's what I'm saying. In life, we will have traffic lights. And every stop of the way, there will be some difficulties. But one thing you or I ought to be for sure, that Jesus will lead us right through the traffic. He will lead us right through the pain. He will lead us right through the struggles because he guides us if we allow him to lead us. Amen. So you ought to have an expectation of that. And then we can find in scripture, which we will go to this morning, how it was interesting that Jesus who lived, I said again, a sinless life. He managed to disappoint an awful lot of people in his life, in his tender on earth. Many people didn't. They disagreed with him. Many people wanted them to him to side with them. Many people tried to make him a king when he was not to be made a king by people. Do you hear what I'm saying? Some people tried to make you be something that you are not. And then they come to be disappointed because you didn't take on the onset of what they wanted you to become in their own light. Do you hear that? Glory to God. I know this is real. It happened with Jesus. 
So he managed to disappoint an awful lot of people. And what we're going to see this morning is the people that he disappointed. And it was Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha was disappointed at Jesus. Why was he disappointed? Because they had cried out to Jesus and they had sent for Jesus. But Jesus didn't arrive at the time that they wanted him to arrive for Lazarus. Because they said Lazarus was dead. But Jesus didn't show up when they wanted him to show up. Do you hear that? In life and in my life, when we have an expectation of things to happen, it necessarily don't happen when we think they're going to happen. They happen unexpectedly. But then unexpectedly, when they happen, we got to know who it came from. Do you hear that? Amen. Glory to God. When it happens unexpectedly, when you least expect it, but you know it's going to happen, we must know whom that it came from. And it comes from Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. So Mary and Martha was very disappointed at Jesus because he didn't come on the first time when they called upon him. Let's open up our word today. Are you, are you with me in scripture this morning to the book of John chapter 11? The book of John, the 11th chapter. The book of John, the 11th chapter. We're talking about disappointments and difficulties. Last week we had left off with the lady with the issue of blood. She had difficulties for 12 years in her life. But she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ who brought healing and respiration to her life. And so the same thing that happened to her can happen with us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the 11th chapter of the book of John, we find the writing here in scripture. It says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. Do you see that? Are you there with me? No, chapter 11. Verse 1, John chapter 11 in the first verse this morning. I'm going to wait for those that may be at home um, looking for your Bible. I'm just joking. You know you got your Bible. When you tune in the spoken word, you know the word is coming. Amen. So you ought to be prepositioned, preset to get the word of God. Amen. And take your notebook because we're going to teach principal things. Amen. And then we're going to teach uh, precepts on precepts and therefore what we teach the application for you to operate in that in the name of Jesus glory to God hallelujah and so it says here in the book of John are we all there this morning amen it says now a man named Lazarus was sick he was from Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha do you see that it tells us where he was from. It tells us all the people that's involved in this here action. Mary and Martha. But Lazarus was sick. He was not dead, but he was sick. Do you see this? Very important to know. He was sick, but he was not dead. He was sick, but he was not dead at the particular time. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now laid sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with a hair. The same Mary, the same Mary before Jesus was crucified on the cross. She poured oil on his feet and the oil represented the preparation for his death. The same Mary now, listen to this, the same Mary. See, you can believe one way and then something happens in your life and you begin to believe a different way. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. It says again, verse two, this Mary, whose brother Lazarus now laid sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with a hair. So the sisters went, excuse me, the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not be in death. It would not be unto death. Do you see that? So problems and pains and disappointments. We may see them in a different light. But Jesus see them a whole total different way. 
Do you hear that? Somebody going to get this this morning. Mary and Martha seen their brother sick. And immediately they thought the sickness would bring him to death. But see, we see through the eyes of God and we live by faith. And Jesus said, this sickness is not unto what? Death. What you think is dead is not dead. Look at what he says. He goes on to show us. He goes on, he says, and verse four again. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. For whose glory? When we go through trials and tribulation, disappointments and difficulties, it's not to kill us nor destroy us. It's to build us up so God can be glorified. But you have to live by faith. I must live by faith in the name of Jesus. This is good already. Coming out the gate and it's good. It says, when he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will, end, will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Who is God's son? Who do we glorify? Jesus. Jesus is the glorified one. And that's what we bring glory to when we stand in difficulties, when we stand in trials, when we stand in disappointments. We bring glory to God the way that we stand because we live by faith. Glory to God. Look at this. Five says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, which is Mary and Lazarus. He loved all three. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. He stayed where he was for two more days. So when they called upon him, he didn't show up when they called. And so that could settle in somebody that you don't care about me. So now they really disappointment. They disappointed at Jesus. See how someone can get disappointed at Jesus. They get disappointed at Jesus. They're going to get disappointed at you. By all means, they're going to get disappointed at me because they're living by my actions and not living by the actions of faith, according to the word of God. Do you see this? Look at this. And then he says again in six. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he said where it, he said he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to the deer. See, when Jesus left Judea, now he's going back to somewhere, a place where people wanted to kill him. So he's going back to the place where people wanted to kill him. You got to have faith to go back to somewhere knowing somebody want to kill you. Do you hear this? And so he says in, 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 in eight, he says, but Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you and yet you're going back. Now, this is very interesting. Now, you and I, if we knew somebody's trying to kill us and somebody calling us to a place where they need us and we knew somebody trying to kill us in that place, will we go? That's a rhetorical question. You have to ask yourself, will I go knowing the place that I'm going and the people that are calling me to come in that geographical area, people are trying to kill me. That's a rhetorical question. Jesus could have made a choice right here and said to himself and to his disciples and say, yes, you're right. I forgot all about them trying to kill me. Why would I even go to a place that I'm called upon and someone is trying to kill me? See, this could be difficult for Jesus right here at this point. But see, Jesus got a made up mind. Jesus understand what he has to do. He will not let anything overcome him because he's lived by the faith and the power and anointing of God. Do you see it? Jesus trusted in the word. Look at this. It even gets better. 
I hope you're grabbing on to this. He says, nine, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daylight will not stumble. What he's saying, if I'm walking in the light of God, if I'm walking in the wisdom of God, if I'm walking in the knowledge of God, I'm not going to stumble. If I'm walking in the wisdom, I'm walking in the knowledge of God, I will not stumble. For he is the light. He orders my steps. He says, for the steps of a righteous man is what? Ordered by God. So he's walking in the light. He says, is there not 12 hours of daylight? He's relying on God. He's relying on the power. He was relying on the wisdom of his father to lead him to where he's going. And he knows he's going into a dangerous situation. See, when we rely upon ourselves, and he's going to tell us this right here in the next part of this. Look at this. He says, nine, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the late daylight will not stumble. You for sure going to make it. Because you're walking in the light of God. For they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks in night that they stumble. For they have no night. So you're walking in darkness. You're walking outside the wisdom of God. You're walking outside the knowledge of God. You're walking in your own delight. That's when we fumble. When we're walking in our own delight, we're walking in our own wisdom, we're walking in our own knowledge, then that's when a higher level of disappointment comes in. A higher level of, 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 of disappointment, higher level of difficulty settles in our life. When we're walking outside of the wisdom of God and we're trying to figure it out in our own psyche, in our own mind. Do you hear this? And so that's what Jesus is explaining right there. He's letting us know it's not about the, the daytime and the nighttime. It's about the wisdom of God. It's about the understanding of God. When you walk in the light, you're walking in the wisdom of God. When you're walking in the dark in the night, you're not walking in the wisdom of God. And there are many people that are not walking in the wisdom of God. They're walking in their own thinking. And we have to come and distract ourselves from that way and get on the right way. Look at this. And then he goes on to say, 30, 11, after he said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I am going there, what, to wake him up. See, he's not dead. He went from sick to sleep, right? He went from being sick to sleep. Went from sick to sleep, but he's not dead. Isn't that right? It's not dead. He's went from sick to being sleep. Twelve say his disciple replied, Lord, if he is sleep, will he get better? See, they thought that he was talking about the natural sleep. The natural substance of the sleep. They didn't catch it, but he was sleep. But the type of sleep they thought it was, was a natural substance of the sleep. See, we get in our own mind that when things are over, that it's done, it's dead. It's not dead. It's lying. Another way to put it, that it's lying dormant. It's lying dormant. And at a presence and a gifting time, Jesus can come and then he can raise what was lying dormant. Do you hear that? And that can happen in your life and my life alike. It's not over. And so he goes on and says, his disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant the natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. He went from sick. To sleep, not natural sleep, but he was sleeping the spiritual. Jesus said that Lazarus is dead. He said that he is dead. 
He said that he is dead. Do you see that? Jesus said he is dead. And for your sake, I am glad. I was not there so that they may believe. Do you see that? Jesus said, I'm glad about that he is dead. And I'm not even there. So that they can believe. That's right. Show his power that he may be glorified. Show us a sample of how we ought to live by faith and trust God in the inevitable things in our life. Everybody thought that he, it was over. See, we got, we, my God, my God. When we're walking with the Lord in the power of his might and the resurrection of his glory, we can't think that it's over. We have to consider Jesus in every area, in all things. Jesus said that I'm not going to go when they want me to come. I'm going to wait a while. Why? Jesus wanted them to build their faith. He could have did it instantly and went the same day. But then he told the disciples he is dead and I'm glad that I didn't go. He's telling them why. He said, I'm glad I didn't go. Why, Jesus, are you glad that I'm not there? So that they may believe. See, some people try to bring disappointments and difficulties in your life to get you to push you away. But we need to stay fixed, as, as Sister Jackie said, that we ought to be fixed and firm, steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the word of God. Jesus wanted them to know, I will come, but I'm not going to come when you want me to. See, some things we have to work out according to the Bible and we have to trust God and that we must seek his counsel. That's why it says that we got to walk in the light, in the wisdom of God. God wants us to know this. And then he goes on to say, but let us go to him. Let us go to him. So now they're moving. They're going to him. And then Thomas, also known as Dimas, said to the rest of his disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. <laughs> they have no faith. Do you see that? They didn't catch what Jesus said. He says, isn't there not 12 hours of light? He says, man, we're not going in our own authority. We're going in the wisdom of God. We're going in the power of God. We're not going in our own power because if we go in our own power, nothing's going to rise. Nothing's going to happen. And when we connect with Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, not in our own authority, but in the authority that he has given to us to trust in him, then a lot of things can happen in our life as well as is going to happen in the life of Lazarus. Look at this. Look at this. And then he says, 17, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Four days they put him in the tomb. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Martha went out, but Mary stayed at the house. Look at this. Very important. Lord, she reported him. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have, have died. She was disappointed. Do you see her disappointment? She said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. See, if they get disappointed in Jesus, don't you think somebody going to get disappointed in you? That tells us right there that people will get disappointed in us because they say, if you were here, my brother would not have died. If you would have came when we called, my brother would not have died. See, a lot of ifs is going on, but it's not over until the Lord says that it's over. It's not finished until the Lord says that it's finished. 
because he says, I am the author and finisher of your faith. That's what he says in scripture. And then it goes on to say right here as we continue to go on. 22. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will arise. Look at what she says. Martha answered, I know he will. Rise again in the resurrection at the last day. She's she thinking about the future. Jesus talking about now. See, your disappointment came, but you can't see that I'm on the scene and I can help you right now. Somebody say, help me, please. <laughs> help me, please. See, Jesus came on the scene to help her, but she's thinking about the future, which is good because we know there will be a resurrection. And all will have to answer to the glory of God for what they did do and did not do. But see, Jesus was there on the scene and telling her, your, your, your brother will arise. See, I came, you called me, now I'm here, now I'm finna get over, your disappointment's finna go and be no more. See, he says that. He will arise. Look at this. This is good. And Jesus said to her, Jesus said to her, look at what he says in 25. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I know he's going to rise, but I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, I'm the one that cancel out your disappointments. I am the one that can cancel out the difficulties in your life. I am the one that can change the situation. Do you see that? I am. And then he says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whosoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? That's what he asked in the question. Do you believe it? They was disappointed at Jesus. If they get disappointed at Jesus, I know somebody going to get disappointed at me. I can get disappointed at you. But the thing is, where do you stand? Will you give in? Will you move back? Will you sit down? Will you stop trusting and obeying and relying on God? That's a question. That's a very good question. Will we? Or will you stop believing, trusting, and relying on God? They got disappointed in him. They knew. They said, God, if you was here, my brother wouldn't have died. Now let's go to John chapter 8. I'm going to show you somebody else that's getting disappointed in Jesus. These are Jewish leaders. They got disappointed in Jesus. They got disappointed at Jesus. John chapter 8, beginning at the first verse. They was disappointed at Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Sister Simmons, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Verse 8, uh, chapter 8. Let's look at this. We're talking about disappointment. The Jewish leaders were disappointed that he didn't appoint an accusation, accusation of finger at the adulterous woman. They was disappointed. She got caught in adultery, but Jesus didn't point his finger at her. They was disappointed because he didn't do anything about what they thought he should do about the situation. Even his disciples, his closest friend and allies, they were disappointed that he had no interest in setting up a military kingdom on the earth. They got the point. They, remember they said, I want you to be our king. Even his disciples that walked with him, they got disappointed at Jesus. So the onset of people get disappointed at the son of the living God. What should move us from people getting disappointed at us? That should strengthen us because it's going to happen. That people are going to get disappointed at you. 
Because disappointment comes in many different facets. People are disappointed because they're disappointed most of the time in their own selves. People want to be somewhere where they're not ready to be, and they get disappointed. People get disappointed by looking at your life because your life is fruitful because you're obeying God and you're being blessed. And now they look at you in a different way and they become disappointed. Now, let's look at this here in John chapter 8. Let's pick it up in the first verse. John chapter 8, 1. John 8 and 1. Look how they get upset at Jesus. Amen. Are you there? It says, hallelujah. It says, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. Jesus went into what? The Mount of Olives. Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. Let me get back over here. John chapter 8. Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. Hallelujah. He went into the Mount of Olives. So he went somewhere. He went somewhere. Jesus went somewhere. Look at this. He says, and Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning, and early in the morning, he came again to the temple. And all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees. Look who's going to get disappointed. The scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, this is Jesus, they said unto master. This woman has taken in adultery in the very act. Now, Moses in the law commanded us. They are not trying to tell Jesus what Moses said in the law. I mean, know that Jesus knows the law. He is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. So Jesus is the word. He's a personified word. So he knows the word. But they put it in seat on Jesus. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says thou? Moses said we are the stoner. But what do you say Jesus? They said. Tempting him. That they might have an act. An act. <clears throat> excuse me, have to accuse him. But Jesus stood, stu excuse me, Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. He stooped down, he wrote on the ground as he heard them not. Now the Bible don't tell us what he was writing. It's only in our imagination where we can think that Jesus was writing. Some say that he was writing and pointing out their sins, what they have done. But we don't know that. We have no clue about what he was writing. And then it says right here in seven. So when they continue asking him, he lift up himself and said unto them. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone at her. Do you see that? Let you do it, okay? You don't have any sin. Let you cast a stone at her. So disappointment is beginning to set in because they brought, G they brought her to Jesus. They thought Jesus was going to do as the law of Moses said, to stone her. But Jesus didn't do that. So now disappointment has risen to another level. The first season Saturday was disappointed. It has risen to another level. Look at this. Look at this. And then it says in the verse where we had in verse 10. Verse eight. And again, he stooped down and rolled on the ground. And they which heard it. Being convicted by their own Conscious. Do you see that? When out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. 
So Jesus was writing, then they say, and they heard something. So as he was writing, something was being said. Do you see that? As he was writing, it says, and they heard. And when they heard this, they started to move away. 10 says, when Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman and said to her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? He says, woman, where are the people that accused you? Where are they at? They're no longer here. So they was disappointed at Jesus. Because Jesus didn't act on how they was going, how they thought he was going to act. Do you see that? People will be disappointed at you because you don't act the way they want you to act. And they'll get disappointed at you. But will that stop? you from moving forward in the things of God? Will it stop you from glorifying Jesus Christ, the son of the living God? Will it stop you and will it stop me from living by faith? No, it should not stop us from living by faith because we trust God. And then it says here, she said, no. She says, no. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He says, I don't condemn you. He forgave her sins. But they was disappointed at Jesus because he didn't do what they thought he should have done. But she was forgiven. See, forgiveness goes a long way. If you're disappointed in someone, or someone disappointed in you, they ought to be able to forgive. Forgiveness goes a long way. Jesus forgave her, and I believe he forgave them that brought accusations and brought them to her because he began to write. And when they heard something that he said, they began to move away. Because one of the key things he says, he who cast the first stone without sin. So that tells me all of them had sinned. And the revelation I got out of this here, and we say this, where were the men and who was she with? Why didn't they bring that individual too before Jesus and just a woman? It's very curious to me. Very, very curious. The scriptures doesn't say. But it's a point to be made. People would try to pressure you to do things to please them. But will you please them? And disappoint Jesus? No. We don't do those things to disappoint Jesus. We carry ourselves in the love of God. We carry ourselves into the light of God. We continue to move according to what God says. And when we look at the scripture, as I said before, the Jewish leader had already discarded the law by arresting the woman without the man. But here's the key. The law required that both parties to adultery be stoned. Why would you just bring the woman and not bring the man? The old added thing, it says, takes two to tango. So where's the person that she was with? Shouldn't he come to be stoned to as well? But you just want to bring her. And when we don't do what you delight for us to do, now you're disappointed in me. No, I need to know the whole story, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me, God. Isn't that right? We want to know all the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us, God. So in this, what we will see is. Number one. We have to show compassion. We must show compassion. When we show compassion. In difficulties and disappointment, we can preserve a relationship. Jesus reserved the relationship with the woman. 
He showed compassion to, to Mary and Martha when he came on the scene. And he told them that Lazarus will arise. There's compassion to be shown. Jesus showed compassion. He showed that Martha and Mary, I know you confronted me. You was upset because I did not come when you want. And you said if I was here, your brother would not have died. But now I'm on the scene and I'm telling you that Lazarus will live. He will live. He will live. See, Martha was different than Mary. Martha, the more practical and direct sister. Because she marched out to meet Jesus. She was direct. She was different than Mary. But Jesus loved them both the same. I am different than you and you're different than me, but he loves us both the same. Do you see that? There's no difference in his love towards us. And Mary was more the emotional sister. How can you say that? Because when Jesus, when Jesus was preparing for his birth, she fell at his feet. Mary wept at Jesus' feet. She was more of the emotional type. But Jesus never characterized to love one more than the other. He loved them all the same equally as the same way he loved Lazarus. So you must show compassion. And in showing compassion, you preserve relationships one for the other in showing compassion. And when we look at this scripture, let's look at 33. Let's look at uh, John 11 and 33. Let's go back over to John 11. And let's hone in on 33, 33 and 34, verse 33 and 34. Because he showed compassion. Listen to this. Listen to this. Let's pick it up in 30, 30 in, in yes, in 30. Are you there in 30? It says, now Jesus had not yet entered the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house confronting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out. They, they followed her, su supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. That's when Jesus had, 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 had she found that Jesus was there and they was in the house with her confronting her, but she heard Jesus was there and she immediately stopped doing what she was doing. And she shot out the house. She quickly moved without hesitation or reservation. She quickly moved. See, sometimes when we know that Jesus is there, we got to quickly move. When Jesus said, I will do, we got to quickly believe without hesitation or reservation. Do you see that? And then 32 says, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, noted what she did. She fell at his feet and said. She fell at his feet. She didn't try to go eye to eye, toe to toe. She wasn't direct with Jesus, said, Jesus, if you would have been here, this would have never happened. She fell at his feet. She humbly submitted herself to Jesus. She humbly submitted herself to Jesus. She didn't approach him in a direct manner. She humbly fell at the feet of Jesus. And that symbolized that Jesus, you got power. I'm humbly submitting myself to you. When problems and disappointments and difficulty comes, we got to humbly submit them over to Jesus. And he will take care of the rest. And it says, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, here you go. But she fell at his feet first. She didn't approach him first in that, in that way. 
She submitted herself to his authority first. And then she opened her mouth and said, Lord, if if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She submitted herself first. In submitting to herself first, she said, Lord, I'm not trying to approach you any kind of way. I'm approaching you humbly. But I want to get what's on me off of me and present it to you. Look at this. And then it says, when Jesus saw her. It's something about the truth of a humble servant falling at the feet of Jesus, crying unto Jesus. Not arrogantly coming to Jesus and saying, hey, if you would have did this, you would have did that, you would have did this. No, look what Jesus did. When Jesus, he says, 33 now, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved. He was deeply moved. That means his heart was touched. It was touched, deeply moved. He was deeply moved in what? Spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he says. He was deeply moved about how she approached him. He's seen her heart concerned. Deeply moved. Her compassion for Lazarus. And then Jesus showing his compassion for her. Do you see that? Deeply moved. He was deeply moved. And then it goes on to say. He says, where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. See how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? See, it's always going to be somebody in the crowd. Somebody going to try to throw a curveball when you're trying to move in faith. Do you see that? Now they're trying to stir up stuff. But the thing about this whole thing, I love the way that Mary approached Jesus. She didn't approach him arrogantly. She approached Jesus humbly at the feet of Jesus. That's where we all need to be at the feet of Jesus in our life, at the feet of Jesus. You approach Jesus humbly. But notice she approached him humbly, but confidently. At the feet of Jesus. And then she expressed. What was on her heart. And then Jesus knew her heart. Because she didn't approach him arrogantly. He says that. He was moved. With compassion. In spirit. And troubled. Because he knew her heart. He knew her passion. He knew that she had a relationship with Lazarus. And Jesus wanted that relationship to continue on. He knew this. And then the Bible goes on to say, again right here in 38, Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. He says, take away the stone. Now he's finna do his thing. He's finna do what he came to do. All spectators. All people that had doubt. Now he's coming. He said, I would have been there, but I'm going to wait. So they can what? Believe. And that the son of God will what? Be glorified. Now he's coming to do what he stated that he would do when he said, I'm going to wait two days before I go there. I know that they want to kill me. And then Jesus said, Jesus says, the first lady said, like in 16, then Thomas also knew Diamond said to the rest of the disciples, let us go that we may die with him. They did have faith. 
Thomas and the others were willing to give their lives if they had to go back to the deal. They had faith. They was willing to give their life too. If Jesus is going to die, then we're going to die with him. We're going to give our life. And that's what it means to give your life to Christ. Give your life to the Lord. Not just when you want something, not just when you need something. I don't care if you got everything, you still got to give your life to God. And Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Give your life to God. Always submitting to him like Mary did. She humbly submitted to him and fell at his feet. And then she opened up and said what she wanted to say. And when she said it, Jesus felt her compassion. He felt her in the spirit realm. And then he was moved with trouble. And then the Bible goes on to say. Then Jesus said. 40, do I not tell you that if you believe, he says, you will see the glory of God. He says, if I, he says, Jesus said, didn't I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. If you believe what God says, that he can remove all doubt, disappointments, and difficulty, you will see the glory of God come in your life. Look at this. 41. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus took, looked up and said, Father, Father. Nor is he going to the authority now. He's going to the one that's higher than him. He's going to the one that gave him authority and all power was given into his hand. He didn't exclude the father. The father has the power. The father has the anointing and he recognized who had the authority and the power just as Mary did when she fell at his feet. She knew Jesus had the power. She knew Jesus had the authority, but she fell at his feet and she still said what she said. If you had not been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus coming back almost in the same scenario when he's finna do what he came to do, that people may believe. My, 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 my. Look at this. He says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. It's a good place to be. But I say this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus said, this ain't for me. Because I know, Lord, Father. When I call on your name, you always hear me. I have no doubt about that. I'm not confused at all. I know when I call on you to act, God, you hear me. But it says, Lord, I need you to show these people that don't believe. And so Jesus said that. I love it right here. He says, 42, I know he's not confused. He has no doubt. He's not disappointed in him not coming when they asked. There's no difficulties in what he's able to do. He says, I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here. I don't preach and I don't teach and I don't stay before God. For the benefit just of myself. You don't preach. You don't study. Not just for the benefit of yourself. If it's for the benefit of yourself, what good is it to be? It's no good. He says, I don't do this for me. Because when I get into the word of God and when I pray unto God, I know God hears me as well as he should hear you. But he says, I do this for the benefit of the people that don't know you like I know you can do all things to benefit them. Do you hear this? So we are there for purpose. To help people get over difficulties and, and, and disappointments that they can see the glory of God in their life. 
Jesus shows us right here. He says, but I say this for the benefit of the people standing here. Jesus is not thinking about himself. He's always thinking about others. Do you see that? He's always thinking about others. That they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. That's the word that he came. He came to call him to be alive. See, our disappointments and difficulties in life, we have to do like Jesus do. Call him out. Come alive. You're not dead. Come alive. In the name of Jesus, come alive, disappointments, come alive, defeat. I got the victory. Speak to it. If Jesus did it, then you and I can do it. We got the victory in Christ. We can do it. He has shown us that when we talk to God, he hears us. And we know. All things will work together for our good according to the purpose of God. Jesus did that and he waited. That the people. That the people. The people will believe. My question is, what are you believing? Are you believing in yourself? Or are you believing in the one? That created all things. And that's God and Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. When we walk like this and believe like this. Then we too can overcome disappointments and difficulties in life. Jesus knows better than anyone. And I pray unto God the father. The creator of heaven and earth and all things that are in. That you and I can come to an agreement that nothing will stop us from trusting the Lord. Just as it was when they called out for Jesus. And Jesus said, yeah, I could have went. But I'm going to wait a couple of days. Because I need to know if they truly going to believe. And as Jesus said unto, Martha said unto Jesus, I know my brother will live in the resurrection. But Jesus said, no, your brother going to live now because he said, I am the resurrection. See, Jesus can be standing and the word is standing right before us and we still don't get it. It has to be illumination in our hearts to know that this is the word of God. This is truth to me. And I believe this. And I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to hold on to it. And we're going to close in Ephesians chapter 6 because I need you to see this. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And this is where we're going to close at the 13th verse. Ephesians chapter 6. In the 13th verse. When disappointments and difficulties settle in our life. Remember. We don't take this off. We always have it on. You sleep with it. You run with it. You jog with it. You bathe with it. It never comes off, my brothers and sisters. This is the revelation that God has given unto us, and he given us this power that we can walk and continue to be victorious, that we walk by faith. He says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, do you see that? The whole armor of God. That means we're covered from head to toe. The whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having all done, he says to stand. Having all that we have done, we still continue to stand. 14 tells us. Stand therefore having your lions girt about with truth. 
He says, I want you to walk in the truth. I want you to stay in the truth, live in the truth, be in the truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness. He says, I want you to be in righteousness with me. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That means we walk according to scripture. We walk according to scripture, it brings us peace. The gospel of peace. That means the word of God. The gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, that's where we are. We live by faith, my brothers and sisters. And I want you to know there's nothing that we cannot accomplish if we have the same common goal that Jesus Christ is Lord and the Son of the living God. There's nothing that you and I can't accomplish here on earth if we're moving in the same direction, not to glorify ourselves, but to glorify the Son of God and trust it. Not just say with our mouth, but really mean it. When I say mean it, that means you showing application of that which you say out of your mouth. He says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Do you see that? All the fiery darts of disappointments, all the fiery darts of difficulties. Do you see that? He says he wants us to stand. We live by faith, being covered with the arm of God. Never walking, letting disappointments and difficulties feed us. Because we're overcomers. And we move with compassion in the spirit of God. Knowing that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Now you at home, I pray. That the Lord has blessed your house today and that you are filled with the wisdom of God. Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? He means that he wants you to walk in the daylight and not walk at the night. Because those that walk in the night are walking without the wisdom and the knowledge of God. He calling you to the light, which is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He wants you to confess your faults and your sin because he says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all fall short of the glory of God. But as we stand in truth and to believe, as Jesus said, Father, I know when I call upon you, you hear me. And when I pray, I know that you answer me. But it's not for me. It's for them that will have benefit in knowing that you will answer them in a time of need. And I'm saying that to you that are home, looking and listening around the world, wherever you may be. Call on the name of Jesus right now and say, Lord, I come to you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I know that you are able to heal me of all of my sins, my pain, and my problems. I turn my life over to you because you are the one that I will benefit from. So I give you my life today, Lord Jesus, and I thank you for allowing me to be in a place of the kingdom of God. And therefore, I surrender all over to you as Mary fell at the feet of Jesus, humbly submitting herself under that which is over her, and that is Jesus, the Son of God, and the power and the anointing. So submit yourself to Jesus, that he may cover you, that you may be secured with the full armor of God, as we closed out in Ephesians, 16, Ephesians chapter 6, 13 through 16. And that we pray that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that try to rise against you shall be condemned. And don't be fooled as it was with the Pharisees and Sadducees that brought the woman with adultery. They was disappointed because Jesus didn't do as they thought he would. You stand in the love of God, find yourself a good Bible-based teaching ministry 
that you will grow on the word and grow on the spirit. We ask you that you continue to support us because we believe that we're going to do great exploits in this community and that we will serve the people of God, that they will come to know that he is the truth, the way and the life here in Tacoma Spanaway. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you. You can give online or you can mail it in or you can drop it off. We thank you for your love and your continued support. We walk together. United we stand, divided we fall. To God be the glory for all that you do to lift up the name of Jesus. Go ye therefore into the world, preaching and teaching the gospel, compelling them to come to Jesus. God bless you, and may the light of Christ shine upon you. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you, Lord.